Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Metal Gear Solid 5 Ground Zeroes. In the last episode, we kind of had a little bit of a finale, and I went ahead and left you guys with a little bit of a proposition of whether or not I should do any more episodes of this game. I did promise I was going to do cassette tape, audio log, listening episodes, brief reprieve type episodes like I had in Peace Walker, and that's what today's episode is going to be. So for those of you who uh, were wanting gameplay today, not going to happen. Um, but you should listen for another minute or two, and then you can move on if you don't want to hear any cassette tapes. So, I've decided, based on the feedback that I've gotten so far, that I... Well, let me just go ahead and say, I, I've gotten feedback from all three aspects of what I asked for. I've got people who want to see me do everything, all the missions, all the things I do, all the collectibles, because it's fun to watch. Well, maybe not the collectibles, but at least showing me do all the missions. I got some people who are like, just do this mission and that mission because those are the only ones who are showing. And I also have people who say, they don't really give a fuck. They're like, nah, you don't need to do any missions. That's, th who cares? They're just missions. So I have people in all three lanes. So I'm going to go with the one in the middle because that's pretty much what I said I would do anyways. Is there any missions worth doing? And based on what I've been told, it sounds like there's a couple missions I might want to show me doing for the first time. The thing is, the missions that uh, are like that, I don't have unlocked yet. To unlock them, I need to collect all the XOF badges, I think. Or maybe do some of the other missions. I don't know. Either way, I'm going to look up a guide, and I'm going to do everything I need to do to have all the collectibles and shit, and we'll do those missions on a different episode. Probably coming very soon. I know it says only 8% complete, but as you guys know, this game is short. Yeah, there was quite a, quite a conversation that went on last episode, in the final episode there about how short this game is and don't even try to tell me it ain't short this game is short as fuck there may be a lot of little content in this game but it's all story and not i don't know it's not a gameplay driven story is that what i'm trying to say that's that's see that's what metal gear solid is it's a gameplay driven story this is one mission well with a few other missions sprinkled in on the same map with the story as a separate thing like the cutscenes are at the beginning and the end of the mission, and the uh, and then you got the cassette tapes, and that's your mi that's that's your story for this mission. So I'm just saying, like, you can't tell me this game is long. That's all I'm trying to say. That's the only argument to say it. Just because somebody can play this game for 80 hours because they enjoy it enough, that's fine. I'm not hating on that at all. Just the argument that it's not short is not valid. Anyway, cassette tape day. This is what you can stop listening now if you don't give a shit. So I know I said I only had one tape, and I've looked up since then how to get the rest of the tapes, so I will be doing that on my own time, and I will have all the tapes hopefully next time you see me, and we'll listen to all the Chico's tapes. But for now, I have all these other tapes up here, which I didn't even click and look at. We got all the pre-mission briefings, which I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to listen to these. I don't know. I probably should, but I don't think I want to today. Today I want to listen to all the pauses stuff. There's a whole thing of pauses spy log from Big Boss and Mother Base, which is very interesting to me. We're probably going to start there. But also, if you go over here to this one, there's an entire thing of pauses diary entries. Now, I don't know if they're the same thing as this one, but we'll find out. And we're going to start with this one, I think. We'll listen to her spy entries, and then we'll listen to her diary entries. And that'll be today's episode. If that takes longer than a half an hour, then it I'll just record them all and make it two episodes. But regardless of that, let's get it started. I'm just going to click play all. I will chime in where necessary. Otherwise, we're just going to be listening to the tapes. So here we go. Play all. I heard about Paz's tapes. Yeah. Why do you think she'd leave them behind? And that diary, <coughs> whatever it was, her commitment was wavering. That much is clear. So she was leaving clues to help us? No way to know for sure. And the ocean's not giving her back. Okay, then. Next. November 4th, 1974. At the outskirts of Barranquilla, Colombia. Contact with Big Boss successful. Zadornov posed as my professor, but Big Boss took one look and knew he was KGB. However, he does not seem to suspect me. To him, I am just a peace-loving student and another victim of the CIA. We asked him to drive the CIA out of Costa Rica. To him, this means betraying his country. His forces are smaller than anticipated. They drift from place to place with nowhere to call home. That provided us an opportunity, so we seized it. 
Zidornov offered them a plant off the Costa Rican coast to use as a base. As expected, Miller jumped at the chance. Although initially reluctant, Big Boss came around when Zadornov played him the tape. All because the voice on it sounded like his mentor, the boss. Oh. <clears throat> Naked cool. Snake, the man who once saved the world from the brink of nuclear war. I awarded the title of Big Boss for his service. <clears throat> he later became a mercenary, abandoning both his title and his country. To him, that honor was steeped in the blood of the boss. The mentor he was forced to eliminate. Exceptionally charismatic. He possesses unparalleled combat and intelligence gathering abilities. His only discernible weakness is... Her. This operation hinges on how effectively we can exploit that. Played us from the very beginning. Kazuhira Miller is Big Boss's <coughs> lieutenant. Half Japanese, half American. He once served in Japan's Self-Defense Force. Though he and Snake first met as enemies, they discovered a common bond and together built their private army, with Miller directing business and administrative affairs. He comes off as shallow, but his true intent is hard to read. I must be careful. All that is clear is his infatuation with Big Boss. <laughs> infatuation indeed. Just suck his dick already. With East and West fighting over its control, Central America is now the most contested region on Earth. CIA Central American Station Chief Coldman has developed Peace Walker, a fully AI automated, fail deadly nuclear launch system with which he aims to reignite the Cold War. Snake's new objective in Costa Rica is to prevent that. The doorknobs, or should I say, the KGB's plan is to play the two sides against each other. Turning the entire region red. Not one of the three parties realize they're all just pawns in Cypher's hands. Cypher watches all. Because he's a bitch. Don't worry, we'll fuck him up later. In Metal Gear Solid 5. has developed rapidly <coughs> since being established in the Caribbean Sea. They recruit more personnel daily, and already their mercenary services are turning a profit. Big Boss's leadership and charisma, and Miller's business acumen drive this impressive growth. Furthermore, joining forces with a faction of the FSLN has expanded their power even more. They have even commenced their own weapons development program. All is proceeding according to Cypher's will. I could not be more pleased. I can listen to this girl talk all goddamn day. That accent is awesome. Snake's pursuit of Peace Walker led him to an AI modeled after the boss's thought patterns. It was incomplete, but, somewhat ironically, making contact with Snake was the necessary finishing touch. Meanwhile, the scientist behind Peace Walker's locomotive control, Huey, defected to Snake's army. His presence has greatly accelerated weapons development at Mother Base. <coughs> Hell yeah. Too bad it backfired. I failed to anticipate Coldman's madness, but nuclear war was averted. However... This was only after the boss AI on board Peace Walker sank itself to the bottom of the lake in what could be likened to suicide. The boss laid down her gun, choosing to sing for peace instead, and Snake, himself a gun, parted ways with her. In doing so, he reclaimed the title he once abandoned. He is Big Boss. Big Boss. Big Boss indeed. Zadornov has been detained. Since this leaves my cover identity without a guardian, the Mother Base staff has taken me in. I am now better placed than ever to monitor their internal affairs. Everything continues to unfold according to plan. The developer of the boss AI, Dr. Strangelove, has also come to Mother Base. With her and Huey's expertise, they can now develop a weapon capable of matching Peace Walker. Or better. Development on the bipedal weapon is now complete. They call it Metal Gear Zeke. It stands there like some sort of mystical guardian. This soldiers gaze on it with pride and reverence. Big Boss has elected to arm it with a nuclear weapon. As an army without a nation, they seem to feel the need for a deterrent against whatever the world might pit against them. It is a dangerous gambit. Why do such a thing? 
Their nuclear strategy differs from the Americans and the Soviet Union. The superpowers deter attack by revealing their nuclear arsenals to one another. Snake and his men know that if they were to go public with this, the whole world would unite against them. Business would dry up overnight. So they do not plan on revealing the nuke until necessary. This ace in the whole approach is their idea of a nuclear strategy. Wielding a deterrent, all the while unable to reveal its existence. I wonder if Snake sees how vulnerable this makes them. Huh. What a bitch. Yes. Hijack Zeke? <clears throat> yes, I did indicate that to be our leverage. But I cannot imagine his agreeing to that now. But did you not raise them to safeguard your governance without borders? No, no. I have not forgotten. Cypher watches all. Okay. Yes, things are proceeding, but modifying Zeke has not proven easy. I am using Zadarnov to buy some time. No, I have not forgotten what you said. However, well, forgive me for asking, but this is you I am speaking to, isn't it, Cypher? He will never reveal I that. must. I will fight Big Boss. The world must be ruled by a single will. To defy Cypher is a fate worse than death. Well, it almost sounds like she didn't want to actually work for him, but she kind of had to. I wonder how much that will come out in her diaries, which we're going to get up to right now. I actually didn't expect those to go by so fast. I'm kind of glad they did. Not quite as long-winded as all the diary entries we listened to in the last game. Anyway, let's go through Paz's diary before I talk too much, and then this ends up taking longer than I think it will. Paz's diary, let's do this. As of today, I will be living here at Mother Base. Now my real trial begins. Zadornov was paying my room, board, and tuition, but he has since been captured. I told the man that with no more money from the KGB, I could no longer afford school. He bought my story. And when I said I would be willing to work, he took pity on me and let me stay. For some reason, Miller really pled my case. That was helpful. But the man is still You thought you had a cool. nice ass. What do you expect? These men are no better. They think their training makes them strong. But that kind of strength is nothing in the face of true power. And better yet, they wait on me hand and foot, believing I am just a schoolgirl. It's the skirt. Looks it was like the I skirt. Be working too hard after all. Just today, while scouting out the living quarters, I saw a group of them in the corner of the deck making a fuss. Going over for a look, I saw they were feeding a kitten. A bunch of grown hard men, and they are the ones acting like schoolgirls. Don't hate kittens are cool. Look, isn't he cute? What is wrong with them? <laughs> Disgusted, I just nodded and smiled. I must stay in character after all. I indulged their chit chat for a few moments. Then one of them asked me to give the thing a name. They had just taken it from its mother. I named it Nuke. <laughs> nice. I improvised some nonsense about how our compassion for living things can help prevent wars. The men gave me a little fish. I held it out in my palm and the kitten happily ate it up. What a pathetic, feeble creature. No wonder we should hate Paz. She hates kittens. I hate anyone who hates kittens. What a bitch. Today, Chico invited me to go fishing with the soldiers. I suppose finding one's own food does have its merit, but I prefer not to be involved in such a degrading task. And their prattling on about fishing being fun is nonsense. I'm not here to find playmates. Nevertheless, distasteful as it was, I went along in order to maintain my cover. Chico thrust a fishing pole into my hands, and we went up onto the deck where several soldiers had gathered. They welcomed us warmly. With so few women aboard Mother Base, I'm treated like a princess. No one suspects I am neither a teenager nor a student. It was nice and sunny, with a gentle breeze and waves. As I cast my line and waited for a bite, the soldiers began to ask me all sorts of questions. As always, I answered according to our predefined scenario, feigning a smile. As I sat there feeding them lies, 
the fish began to bite, and the soldiers began to focus on their prey. Chico had his bait stolen by a fish, and got so angry that he stood up and nearly fell into the sea. Everybody laughed. It almost made me want to join in too. At some point, I got a bite myself. The instant after I felt that first gentle tug, the fish yanked the line with astonishing strength, and I let out a cry of surprise. I thought he was going to be huge. It was my first time fishing, and I was a bit flustered, so the soldier beside me helped by supporting the pole from behind. Reel it in, they shouted. I nodded, turning the handle as fast as I could. I wondered what kind of fish lived below the surface, and thought back to the deep sea dives I had to do as part of training. Those were difficult days, but I remember finding the multicolored fish gliding through the water incredibly soothing. After a hard fight, I pulled it up. To my surprise, it wasn't even half a vara, rather anticlimactic. But I wasn't doing it for fun, so I wasn't the least bit disappointed. Nuke was hovering nearby with an expectant look on his face, so I gave the fish to him. All in all, a thoroughly wasted day. It sounds like she's gonna. This is gonna progressively get to the point where she breaks down and becomes more are coming human. Along nicely. No one suspects me of being the one to let Zadarnov out of his cell. Today, Amanda and I taught Cecile how to make gallo pinto. It is a simple home-cooked dish consisting of black frijoles mixed with arroz. It is well known throughout Central America, not just in Costa Rica. So it is no surprise that a Nika like Amanda would be good at making it. But I was raised in the States from a very young age, and could hardly even remember my mother's gallo pinto. Having to make chit chat with that clueless bird lover and this so called revolutionary was excruciating. And, clueless or not, I will need to be especially careful around Cecile, the one who actually recorded that tape. Thankfully, Miller and his men seemed to believe I mistook the tape I found for one my friend made. In any case, one can never be too careful. Hmm. Anyway, the three of us minced garlic and herbs, then cooked them in a pot with frijoles we'd soaked overnight. While waiting you guys for writing them the to set cook, recipe down? we sauteed onions and arroz in a frying pan. Cecile worked the frying pan according to Amanda's directions, but seemed a bit glum. She does have a knack for cooking, though. She is French, after all. We added water to the pan and watched the arroz begin to steam. While we waited, Amanda shared memories of her mother with us. They had been separated because of Simosa, but the taste of her mother's cooking was still fresh in her mind. When the frijoles were ready, we drained the water, stir-frying them with the rest of the vegetables. Quite a complicated process for home cooking. Nonetheless, it kept them occupied. The longer we sat and talked, the greater the chance of my arousing their suspicions. With women, it is not enough to just bat your eyelashes and giggle. It takes a lot of effort to divert attention. When the arroz was done cooking, we folded it into the frijoles and added salsa, stirring the mixture as it simmered. At this point, for some reason, the conversation turned to romance. Why does it have to be that way whenever women get together and chat? Because they're all horny and they don't want to admit it. Cecile fancies herself to be well-versed in such matters and gave Amanda all sorts of advice. It was harmless enough. Until, to my irritation, she began pestering me whether there was anybody I liked. Not right now, I said, trying to dodge the question. But she pressed on. It's Snake, isn't it? I gritted my teeth and played it coy. Maybe. Cecile nodded and giggled. He is pretty sexy, isn't he? What a ditz. <laughs> it's all I can manage to just survive. The thought of romance has never once crossed my mind. I have no interest in that kind of man. Soon enough, a rich aroma began to fill the room. The gallo pinto was ready. Nu came over and rubbed up against our legs, looking for a handout. Unfortunately, it was not the kind of food a cat would like. We let a few of the soldiers have a bite, and then headed off to the mess hall. The home-cooked flavor we'd achieved was a big hit with the men of MSF. Not that we are trying to impress them or anything. Even I could manage a dish like that. Snake enjoyed it too. Let me make this absolutely clear. 
I have no interest in that man. Then why did we bang inside of that cardboard box that one time, huh? Huh? Football, huh? or soccer as it is known in the States, is extremely popular here. It has not caught on yet in the U.S., but it has legions of rabid fans all across Latin Should America. Shit, all across the world, not just Latin These America. Fans can get so rowdy that it is commonly believed El Salvador and Honduras went to war in 1969 over scuffles in a soccer match. That's pretty funny. In reality, tensions between the two countries were already high. The match was merely one of the sparks that set them off. But these people are so passionate about this sport that the story seems plausible. Predictably, many of the soldiers here are fans. They have apparently divided themselves into Costa Rican and Nicaraguan teams and started playing each other. To play, you need a ball and two goals. The R&D team built and set up simple goals on the deck. I had absolutely no interest, but Chico insisted that I come and watch. It was not a proper match by any means. The pitch was not even regulation size, but the players and spectators alike got pretty excited. They banged empty cans and shouted cheers through the handmade megaphones. It almost felt like carnival. Huey, the referee, blew a whistle. Huey was the ref. <laughs> the soldiers' training has left them the in ref. excellent physical shape. But they lacked the honed skills of professionals, and their play was quite rough. Midway through, one of the men collided with another. They started shouting at one another. But Huey stepped in. Red card, red card. I thought we had forsaken our countries, become one with the earth, he said, quoting Snake. We are not competing for national pride here, and we are not fighting for the good of any one country. This is not a war. Soccer is a peaceful sport, am I right? The soldiers nodded. They know the pain of war, and they share Snake's vision. Perhaps that is why all this resonates with them. Team Costa Rica was down a man. And somehow, I was picked to fill in. Somehow. Costa Rica had the advantage up until that point. I suppose Huey wanted to keep it balanced. The soldiers agreed with Huey's call. It's because they want to see her run around Costa in that Rica skirt. That's all it is, man. even matchup would be more fun, too. I could not be bothered to run at first. But chasing the ball out there in the hot sun, I was soon drenched in sweat. Before long, I found myself actively seeking out the ball, Partially out of desperation. I picked up a loose ball deep on the opponent's side of the field. Even though he's Nicaraguan, Chico cheered me on, yelling, Go for it! Shoot! I launched that ball as hard as I could, only to have it blocked by the keeper. Disappointment only increased my determination. In the end, I didn't score a single goal, and Costa Rica gave up its lead. It was really close, though. We congratulated each other on a good match and sprawled out in the shade on the deck, exhausted. The ocean breeze felt so nice on my sun-soaked body. New oh, yeah. Tell me more about that. It's one the of sun -soaked his favorite body part. spots. And stretched out next See, every one of these has the together, cat in it. We watched fluffy white clouds drift lazily across the She loves that cat. Sky. She can't lie. She can't lie. She loves that kitty cat. Maybe she's it talking about her own kitty cat, today. if you know what I'm saying. So I decided to sun myself in a lounge chair up on the deck when strange love came up to me. Despite the heat, she was in her usual long sleeves and pants. I waved at her. She looked away and mumbled, H Hello there. Fancy meeting you? <laughs> she's going to hit on her. <laughs> I asked if she needed anything, feeling her eyes creeping up and down my body like... She was savoring it. Oh, she was. Finally, she swallowed and said, You have such beautiful skin. <laughs> May I, I have my some head of it? And said, no, not at all. I had heard rumors that she was a lesbian. But she couldn't be after me, could she? Why not? She continued to stare and said, No, it is beautiful. But you must not let yourself get so tanned. And then she took my hand in hers. What is wrong with a little son, I asked, trying to cut the conversation short. But she shook her head violently. No, you mustn't. A young lady should take better care of her skin. Haven't you ever heard of skin she cancer? She was acting strangely now, as if aroused. She lectured me on the perils of tanning, how it ages skin, 
causing wrinkles and spots, and in the worst cases, even skin cancer. Exactly. I knew already that tanning could cause spots, but I thought only pale-skinned Anglo-Saxons had to deal with that. <laughs> White Having people? Having scientist tell me it causes aging, though, that spooked me a little. If I am to keep playing the teenager, I will have to start paying more attention to my skin. Sensing my anxiety, she took a small tube from her pocket. She said it was the sunscreen she always used. She told me to keep it. I didn't know what to say. Thank you so much. I was more than happy to take it, but exactly what were her intentions? Was she merely being nice? She's trying to mac on you, duh. Was she really into me? You know it. Either way, there was no reason to refuse, I suppose. I mean, it was just some suntan lotion. I have undergone training. An out-of-shape woman does not pose any real threat to me. Having power means not being afraid. It is the same on a global scale. A country with nukes can dictate terms to a country without them. I thanked her and took the tube. Took the tube. And she offered to put some on for me. <laughs> she squirted some lotion onto her fingers and began rolling it into my chest. Oh, is that right? It happened so suddenly, Stop. and I was Speak so taken slower. aback that I did not even think to protest. <laughs> she caressed my stomach with her long, white oh, fingers. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah? Did she? Then slid them upwards between my bikini-clad breasts. Oh, yeah? Tell me more. What? Wait! I sputtered as her moist eyes met mine. Her moist eyes? She was beautiful. <laughs> Somehow... I found myself captivated by this woman more than ten years my elder. Hold still, she whispered in my ear. I nodded silently, unable to refuse. My body went limp, motionless, as if in a trance. Gently, carefully, she rubbed the lotion all over my entire body. You loved it. I shouldn't have enjoyed it. <laughs> I shouldn't have and enjoyed yet, it. I could not help myself for a moment. I was spelled. You loved out. it. Just say you loved it. That woman is dangerous. Sensual. I had better watch myself. <laughs> I'm just getting hot thinking about that. Aw, oh, snap. Protecting one's health is an important part of any agent's job. But despite my best efforts, I have caught a cold. Well, isn't that just shit? Now that I think about it, Mother Base's numbers are on the rise with soldiers coming from all different places and backgrounds. It is no wonder, then, that sooner or later, someone would bring in a virus. Damn it. That said, what I have got is just a common cold. Are you sure about that? The medical team said I'd need a few days rest, so I've been restricted to my room and put on bed rest. I thought I'd gotten used to not having anyone around to relate to, but at times like these, being alone is just miserable. All I could do is lay there and stroke Nuke's back, trying to take my mind off how bad I felt. Nuke just sat there, not making a sound. But I did have visitors. Amanda and Chico, Huey, Cecile, Miller, and a few of the soldiers I've become relatively close to. Amanda made me a soup with herbs she said were good for a cold. Miller told me to take it easy. I will sing you a lullaby, he said. Then broke out a guitar and sang some incomprehensible song in Japanese. I did not need to understand the lyrics to know he is an awful singer. Then he said, you know what is good for a cold? Suppositories. <laughs> Here, I'll show you. Here, let me shove this he pill up your ass. He began to take off his pants, so I threw my tissue box at him to make him <laughs> go away. Then, That's funny. strange love showed up. Saying she had some miracle Indian cure. Does it involve rubbing something all over your body? Eucalyptus extract, she said. Oh, it just on your best chest. If you rub it Here, let me chest. help you. And then she tried to take off my nightshirt. <laughs> I whacked her with my pillow, and I got rid of her. Chico brought me a little flower in a cup. It had been growing in a little bit of earth that probably found its way on board stuck to something else. I found this on the deck. Here, you can have it. He tried to act nonchalant, but I am pretty sure he's got a crush on me. Of course he does. None of them understand. If they thought these little visits would cheer me up, they were wrong. Tonight, Snake himself came to my room. Oh, yeah? Like the rest, he believes I am just a schoolgirl and treats me as such. Why did you abandon your country, I asked him. 
Why create the MSF? Of course, I knew the answers already, but I wanted to hear it from him. As I had imagined, he was not exactly forthcoming. All he would say is that his country abandoned him, because all he could do was fight. And that is why he needed the MSF, because that is all he is any good for. Then he said, fighting is the only thing I understand, but that does not mean I have got a grudge against those who believe in peace. I am not one of them, and I do not believe in peace. Conflict is in man's nature. We fight our enemies in order to survive. Maybe we are not so different after all, he and I. But that is exactly why I'm going to have to kill him. Or else he will have to kill me. When I stop and think about this wretched existence, being killed by a man like that suddenly does not seem like such a bad thing. Dun dun dun. Every month, Mother Base throws a party for all the soldiers whose birthdays fall in that month. There is something strange about a military organization having parties. Really though, it is just an excuse to drink and make noise. It is not easy to get alcohol in a fortress in the middle of the ocean. Most days they are training from dawn till dusk. They do not have time for things like drinking. That is why Snake and Miller came up with the idea to give everyone a chance to let loose. Obviously, a bunch of boars like that are not going to bother with blowing out candles on a cake. Rather, they sit there in a cloud of cigarette smoke, drink beer, eat meat, tell tasteless jokes, and swap crude insults about one another's hometowns. But it hardly ever breaks out into something serious. They talk up a storm, but they're just having fun. It is funny. You have got members of FSLN rubbing shoulders with the UCLA's. People who once would have considered the other mortal enemies. I wonder if that is what makes Big Boss so popular. In leaving their countries behind, they leave their hatred for other countries too. Miller seemed a little protective of me. Hope they're not being too crude, he said. But soon enough, he too was drunk. He yelled, come here and take a look at the real Kazuhira Miller. Then dropped his pants and mooned everybody the other soldiers burst out laughing. <laughs> I have never seen such a crude, ridiculous party before. And yet, all these people laughing and acting the fool. Act the is fool. Is this what they call peace? It is. For some reason, I began to think about all that has happened since I came here. Fishing with Chico, cooking with Amanda and Cecile, playing soccer, having visitors when I caught a cold. When I stop and think about it, my time here has been the most peaceful of my life. But that is about to end. I cannot imagine you will be willing to negotiate. It seems I am to fight the legendary Big Boss. I do not know if I'll be able to beat him. But if I have to choose between death and defying Cypher, I will gladly choose death. The thought of dying does not scare me. But if I disobey my orders, the fear and despair awaiting me will be far worse than anything I can imagine. It was Cypher who took me in as an orphan, gave me food and a place to live. His orders may have been unreasonable, but I will never repay my debt entirely. It seems I have no choice. I must fight this man. I must fight Snake. Do you know Miller? Snake's right-hand man apparently has got at least one serious weakness. He is an insatiable womanizer. That we learned. He does not bother me, most likely because he considers teenagers off-limits. But he has hit on every single one of the few female soldiers here at Mother Base. They ought to be telling him where to stick it, but end up falling for it so easily. I think some of it stems from the fact that he is actually not that uh -oh, bad. Oh, pause has got a thing for cause. Anyway, today that nasty habit got him in trouble. He and Snake got into one of their rare fights, and I was there to see it. They burst out of the showers completely naked, trading punches. I am no child. The sight of a naked man does not make me blush, but this was something else. Maybe this will teach you, Snake yelled as he slammed his fists into Miller's chest. I heard later that apparently he had been two-timing someone, 
and that same someone had gone to Snake with her troubles. As I see it, it is her own fault for letting herself be deceived like that. If she is too dumb to see through Miller's lies, then she got what she deserved. <laughs> but this was not the first time it had happened, or the second. And Snake read Miller the riot act. Miller argued back, and what began as a shouting match turned into a fist fight. You son of a bitch, Miller yelled as he swung. Not bad, said Snake, smiling. But not good enough. And then he was back on the offensive. They had already been at it pretty hard in the showers, and their bodies were covered with bruises. Both of these men had been trained for war, their bodies deadly weapons. They were each bleeding from a dozen places. All this from a fist fight. Even so, it was far less gruesome than if they had given it their all. It was obvious that one of them would be dead were they fighting for real. Miller took another swing, yelling, Try this then! Snake parried, then responded in kind. But I could tell he was not aiming for anything vital. You are one tough bastard, boss, Miller muttered. A smile crept across his face as he caught his breath. And then they went right on fighting. Blood and sweat flew off their glistening bodies. He was combat without hatred or hostile intent. I had never seen violence like this before. It's like a boxing match. And yet, it was more than just a friendly tussle. They were utilizing every technique they knew. It was not a sporting UFC. match. They were not playing by the rules. How could they keep this up? At last, the two men tired themselves out, and the bizarre scene came to an end. They looked at each other's battered bodies, and then burst out laughing, embracing and congratulating each other on a good fight. It all seemed so idiotic. I still cannot fathom such behavior. But somehow, I got the sense that for all his womanizing, Miller really only trusted one person, and that was Snake. There was no way I could ever come between the two of them. And at that thought, I began to feel as if I had lost. Yeah, dude. BFFs, bro. You don't even know. All of Mother Base is preparing for a festival. Since Snake and his soldiers spend so much time fighting, they are setting aside one day a year for peace and relaxation. I do not know all the details, but apparently that is what Snake and Miller decided. These soldiers love the idea, of course. There is so little fun to be had here that everybody looks forward to events like these. That is all well and good. But somehow, I got roped into getting on stage. Come on, we even both have peace in our name, said Miller. And Zadarna, that old Ruski's name, has something to do with peace too, right? Hey, as long as we are having a day of peace, we ought to get an act together. The Three Peace Band. I thought he was joking. He then proceeded to share his idea without bothering to check with me. And now, I am slated to sing. Apparently, he had heard me on the deck one day, and since then, he's wanted to form a band. Everybody's looking forward to it, so there is no way for me to back out now. I have never done anything like this, but it does feel kind of nice to know that people are looking forward to it. <laughs> She's such a hypocritical I mean, person in her own mind. Be any worse than I don't want to do this, singing, but I do want to do it, kind of. But modifications to Zeke are already finalized, and I must complete my mission. Betray Sai for now. And I will face a fate far worse than death. Still, there is no need to put things in motion just yet. Let's go sing first. What difference would it make to just wait a little while longer? A whole day of peace. The mission can wait until after that. Can it not? I think so. I know I am only delaying the inevitable. When the day comes, one of us will have to die. Snake or me. But still, if I could just come up with some way to stall Cypher, at least until our day of peace. Uh, when did I start having thoughts like this? All the time? You just don't fucking realize it? My cover is blown. They know nothing of Cypher or my true objective. But they know I am a spy. There is no more time left. I must act now. I must complete my mission. How did it come to this? All I wanted was three more days. Just three. Miller's already finished writing the song. It is called Love Deterrent. 
It is about a girl who cannot express her true feelings. I have been practicing. I am no pro, but I was pretty sure I would do a decent job. And now this. Cypher found out that Zeke was complete. He must have someone inside Mother Base besides me. Spinning his tightly wound web of control, leaving no room for individual will. Typical. When they found out Zeke was complete, I was ordered to execute the operation immediately. Immediately. If I was going to enjoy just one day of peace, I had to ensure the plan could not move forward. I tried to sabotage Zeke. I thought by damaging the drive system, they would have no choice but to delay their plans. I waited until midnight, and then snuck into the hangar. There would be trouble if it looked like sabotage. I selected one of the drive system's load-bearing parts, and carefully worked to warp its shape. The legs drive system requires a high degree of precision to operate. Even the smallest deviation would have done it. Then, Chico walked in. Uh-oh. Maybe it was one of those nights where he could not sleep. In any case, he saw me, panicked, and took off running. It would have been easy to kill him. But I could not. I know he likes me. It is not as if I would ever have an interest in a child like him. But I could not pull the trigger. Not at him. Not in the back. Will he tell them? Or is there a chance he will keep it a secret? Protect me? No. He knows now. Knows I am not who he thought I was. He ran without even questioning what I was doing. There is no chance he does not know. And soon, all I have built here will end. And if Cypher has another agent among them, if he finds out I tried to sabotage Zeke, this place will no longer be my heaven. Then it is settled. I make my move now. Chico walked in before my sabotage was complete, so Zeke should still be operational. It might not run at full speed or power, but I do not have time to fix that. Without Zeke, I do not have a chance in hell of winning. I must act fast before Chico sounds the alarm. I knew it would come to this. <laughs> I just did not think it would be so soon. <laughs> It is time, Zeke. Metal Gear Zeke. Activate. Dun dun dun. Alright. That does it for the pause diary entries. That's cool. Interesting. Try to make you feel a little bit more for pause. That's fine. I get it. I mean, yes, technically I was pretty mad at pause after we had our little spat in Peace Walker, but I don't know. I didn't really hate her. I just, you know, she was she turned on us, so we had to give her her due diligence. But I had a feeling there was some more to it than that, and I'm glad we got a little bit more backstory to it. And that's where we're going to stop today. I know it's a little bit longer, but I wanted to fit those all in one recording. I didn't expect those to be as long as they were after going through her original tapes and they were shorter. Regardless of that, hope you guys enjoyed that. In the next episode of Let's Play Metal Gear Solid five ground zeros i will likely do chico's tapes if i have them all unlocked by then either that or we'll be doing the other uh side missions that i will likely do on screen um yeah so it's either one or the other so if you want to know how many more episodes of this i'm probably going to do it's probably going to be two more episodes depending on how long those other missions take three if the missions take time so maybe three episodes depending on because there's two missions i'm thinking of doing but like I said, it depends on how long they take. And I should have one more episode of cassette tapes, unless Chico's tapes are like a million years long. Um, but that should be everything. I don't think there's anything else I plan on doing. Um, yeah, and that should be it. So, yeah, next time we'll do either missions or we'll do more cassette tapes, depending on what I have unlocked. So I'll see you guys then. Peace!